Breakthroughs in electronics and digital technology have arguably made the most powerful impacts on our lives today. Electronic devices like our phones have changed the way we live drastically. I use my phone all the time, but after a while, the back of it will start to get a little hot. We all know that electronic devices output heat, but why? The circuits and wires inside an electronic device do not conduct electricity perfectly. They have a certain amount of electrical resistance, which is the tendency for material to resist the flow of electrons. This resistance manifests itself as heat and sometimes light, which is great for light bulbs and toasters. Without electrical resistance, your toaster wouldn't toast and breakfast would be ruined. However, most of the time, you don't want your electronics to heat up. This is why we use materials like copper that conduct electricity well without much resistance. Aluminum, copper, silver, and gold are great conductors of electricity, but gold and silver are rare, so aluminum and copper are often used because they're less expensive. But even these highly conductive materials still don't conduct electricity perfectly, which is why electronic devices like computers get so hot, needing all kinds of fans, heat sinks, radiators, and heat pipes to keep it from melting or even catching fire. Electrical resistance is a big issue for pretty much anything that uses electricity. Modern power lines use thick cables and high voltages to reduce electrical resistance, but a lot of electricity is still wasted. It just turns into heat and floats away. If only there were a way to conduct electricity with absolutely no electrical resistance. That's what a superconductor is. Superconductors are able to conduct electricity perfectly with no resistance and no heating of any kind. Superconducting wires are used for things that require massive amounts of electricity, like inside MRI machines, power plants, and particle accelerators. But unfortunately, there's a catch. For superconductivity to work, you need incredibly low temperatures near absolute zero that requires the use of liquid nitrogen or helium. This greatly restricts how and where superconductors can be used today. To try to better understand this technology, we decided to run an experiment. Being absolute ballers at conducting electricity is not the only thing superconductors do. A superconductor is able to levitate in a magnetic field. To demonstrate and observe this phenomenon, we got 200 very strong neodymium magnets to create the magnetic field and a superconductive disk. Not all materials show superconductivity. The first material to show it was mercury, and the effect can be found in about 25 other elements, though it's also been discovered in thousands of compounds and alloys. Each material becomes a superconductor at a different temperature known as its critical temperature. Unfortunately, most materials superconduct only within a few degrees of absolute zero, but we use yttrium barium copper oxide, which will work at a toasty negative 181 degrees Celsius, hot enough for liquid nitrogen to do the trick. We decided we wanted our superconductor to levitate around a track, so we meticulously aligned each small and very powerful magnet in the specific pattern of north-south-north to create the right magnetic field. This was difficult to accomplish as the columns of north-south-north magnets repelled each other when we tried to line them up. To get our hands on the liquid nitrogen, we reached out to the Texas Center of Superconductivity at the University of Houston. They very kindly agreed to give us space to run the experiment, as well as all the liquid nitrogen we wanted. I believe in you. We obtained a petri dish in which we would cool our superconductor, and it didn't take very long before it was below its critical temperature. When we cool matter to very low temperatures, they can take on all kinds of new properties. This is because of changes that take place at the quantum level. All particles of matter occupy what's known as a quantum state, which describes statistically how they behave based on their energy. Most of the time, different particles will occupy all kinds of quantum states because they have all different amounts of energy. But when you get closer and closer to absolute zero, atoms have so little energy that those differences begin to disappear. Instead, atoms become incredibly orderly, and most of them will enter the lowest quantum state in which the entire material will behave like a giant molecule. When this happens, they can end up forming substances with properties like the fractional quantum Hall effect, Bose-Einstein condensates, superfluidity, and superconductivity. This is why superconductors conduct electricity perfectly and why they levitate. Placing the superconductor on the track, you can see that it locks itself into place. This is because superconductors are perfect diamagnets. They exclude all magnetic flux, a process known as the Meissner effect, named after the German physicist who discovered it, Walter Meissner. The magnetic field cannot penetrate the superconductor, but rather it repels it, lifting the superconductor up. It is able to shoot across the track with just the slightest bump as there is practically no friction, all the while maintaining the same distance off the track and angle it was placed at. As you can see, non-magnetic objects placed underneath have no effect on this phenomenon. However, it does not take long before the superconductor warms above its critical temperature, gently floating down. We were able to make the effect last longer by placing it in a styrofoam capsule, keeping it insulated and slowing down its rise in temperature. The effect can be reversed as well. You can place small magnets over a superconductor below its critical temperature, 
and you can see the magnet hover in place, even spin around slowly. Scientists have been working to create superconductors that work at higher and higher temperatures. If we had superconductors that worked at room temperature, modern technology would be changed forever. Remember all those heat sinks, fans, and heat pipes? With a superconducting computer, you wouldn't need any of that anymore. Electronics would get smaller and use less electricity more efficiently.